Well, good morning. Well, thank you for joining us today as we worship the Lord at St. Paul. Our theme for today, the Sunday after Easter, is sharing the Lord's peace. Our opening hymn is, He's Risen, He's Risen. In our service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. 
Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again. And Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. 
Amen. In the days that followed Jesus' death, the disciples were hidden away for fear of the Jews because they thought that they were going to be next. The chief priests and the leaders of the church had Jesus crucified on a cross because he said that he was the Son of God. And now, what of his followers? Would they be crucified too? On Easter morning, the women went to the place where the disciples were hiding, and they told them what they saw when they arrived at the tomb, that the stone was rolled away and the body of Jesus was gone. Then the women said that two men with bright clothing suddenly appeared, telling them that Jesus has risen. The disciples and those who were with them didn't believe their story, but Peter had to see it for himself. And when he peered in and saw the linen cloths, he marveled at what had happened. For weeks, we've been hunkered down in our homes, following the recommendations of our president and the executive order that was placed upon us by our governor. And for the time being, we all must remain at home, hiding in fear while the virus continues to spread. Many of us know someone who has already been infected. So as we pray for God to heal them, we also wonder, will they get sick? And if they do, will they get better? Today, we're worried because we're not quite sure how this is all going to play out. And our government still isn't able to answer all of our questions. How much longer do we need to stay at home? Will we make it through this okay? And will we, or one of our loved ones, be the next to test positive? In our scripture reading for today, it was in the evening of that first Easter when Jesus came and stood among his disciples. He said to them, Peace be with you. And when they saw the scars on his hands and on his side, they were glad, for they recognized the Lord. Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Last week, we celebrated with joy the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on that day, we rejoiced, knowing that his resurrection will lead to our own resurrection on the last day. Thanks be to God that he has revealed this good news to us in his word and through the power of his Holy Spirit. For it is in these gifts that we receive faith which trusts and believes. So now, in the midst of all of this uncertainty, we can still be at peace, because we know what's going to happen in the end, when the Son of God returns. On Good Friday, the chief priests and the leaders of the church heard what Jesus had said, that he is the Son of God. However, they didn't believe So they crucified him on a cross. Yet, unbeknownst to them, 
this perfect sacrifice was acceptable to God the Father as the one-time holy offering for sin. And three days later, Jesus became the first fruits of the resurrection of the dead. For when he rose, he received a glorious new body that would never die again. Alleluia! A thanks be to God that he allowed his Son to take our place. And today, let us praise his holy name because once our salvation was accomplished, Jesus came and delivered to his disciples peace. Unfortunately, not all of his disciples were there. Thomas was missing. That means that he didn't get to hear Jesus' words. And he didn't get to see the scars on Jesus' hands or his side. And that means that he didn't get the chance to acknowledge Jesus as his Lord and Savior on that day. So the Lord came back once again, bringing his peace. And this time, Thomas believed as he confessed, my Lord and my God. As Thomas confessed his faith so long ago, we can also confess our faith in Jesus Christ with our life and in our daily conversation. In our scripture reading, we were reminded that when the disciples heard about the good news the first time, they didn't believe until Jesus visited them and gave them his peace. Years ago, you also received the Lord's peace through the word of God when you acknowledged that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. But here's a question. Did you place your trust in God the first time you heard about the good news? Probably not. Yet God loves you so much that he continued to pursue you until you were willing and able to receive his peace. But once the disciples recognized the Lord, he said to them once again, Peace be with you. But then he said, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Did you hear that? Jesus said, I am sending you. Why? Why is Jesus now sending you? Well, it's for the same reason that Jesus sent out his disciples the first time. Because Jesus wants more people out there to receive his peace. But how? It's simple, really. All you need to do to deliver the good news to people you know is to share with them a personal message with a portion of the Easter message that you saw last week on YouTube. Because that message of salvation that brought you joy in the midst of all of this uncertainty can also bring them peace if they're willing to listen and receive the good news that Jesus is their Lord and Savior too. So go ahead, share the Lord's peace. Give the people you know another chance because the Lord wants to reach out to them through you and it's only a few clicks away. 
After this worship service, I'll post a new abbreviated message for you to pass along to them on YouTube. If you need help, give me a call. And if you know someone who's not able to view these videos on the internet, then call me anyway. I'll be happy to give you a written transcript. Because Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will gather our prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have gathered us together to celebrate that Jesus has risen from the dead. Through the gift of your word and in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have revealed to us this good news that delivers to us eternal life. When we turn to you, acknowledge your son's sacrifice and glorious resurrection. It is in this sure and present hope of our own resurrection from the dead that delivers to us peace in the midst of life's uncertainties. Lord, since it is according to your will, we ask you to help us share your peace with the people around us. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. God in heaven, it is in times like these when we are reminded that we are completely dependent upon you for all things. Lord, we know that you are sovereign and that you remain in control. Help us to remain vigilant and wise during this time. Guide our government to lead us. Equip our health care system to be prepared for the days ahead and empower your church to be a beacon of hope and peace to all who are seeking you. If it is according to your will, spare our communities and all of our loved ones from this sickness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we pray for all of the people who are celebrating birthdays. This morning, we ask you to be with Olivia Clippert, Will Kromzak, and Anita Hansen, whose birthdays are today. We also ask you to be with Braley Woolweber and Velda Cromer, who will be celebrating their birthdays later this week. Lord, continue to provide and protect them in this life with good health and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, before our fall into sin, you blessed Adam and Eve with the gift of marriage. Lord, on this day, we ask you to also bless Ruth and Margaret Stryker, who are celebrating their 30th anniversary this week. I help this couple who has been joined together by you love and remain committed to each other for the rest of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, we humbly ask you to provide healing to all in need. We specifically pray for Harvey Spurl, Carol Wells, Ed Wheelwright, Denny Meyerhofer, Luann Jordan, Darlene Steffes, Lou Paglin, Mary Ambrosia, a Karen Steffes, and those who are in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is selected verses from O Sons and Daughters of the King. sons and daughters of the King, whom heavenly hosts in glory sing. Today the grave has lost its sting. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let night be Apostles met in fear, among them came their master dear, and said, My peace with you here. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. When Thomas first the tidings heard that they had seen the risen Lord. He doubted the disciples' word. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My peers inside, O oh Thomas, but believing be. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. No longer Thomas then denied, he saw the feet, the hands, the May the Lord continue bless you and your families during this glorious time of Easter. And may he also bless his message of salvation that we are about to share. God's blessings. <laughs>